Greetings. I'm Terry Rhodes, Vice President for Quality Curriculum and Assessment at the Association of American Colleges and Universities. We welcome you to the fourth in our series of Next Generation Assessment WebBite interviews with the leaders of each of the seven regional accrediting bodies in the United States. We asked each leader what they've been hearing from their member campuses during the pandemic related to two critical areas, the campus climate for assessment on those campuses and what expectations the accreditors have for useful evidence of student learning going forward. Here, we speak with Barbara Gelman Denley for the higher, from the Higher Learning Commission. Hi, I'm David Miller from the University of Florida, where I'm a professor in research and evaluation methods, and also the director of the School of Human Development and Organizational Studies in Education. And today, it's my pleasure to be a co-host on the WebBite series, and we are talking today about next generation assessment from the accreditor's perspective. Hi everyone, I'm Tammy Cumming. I'm the Assistant Vice President and Associate Provost for Brooklyn College's Office of Institutional Effectiveness. And it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Barbara Gelman Danley. Thank you very much. I'm Barbara Gelman Danley, President of the Higher Learning Commission. We serve 19 states at this time, close to a thousand institutions combined. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here today. And for our first question, basically, we've been thinking about, uh, given the COVID-19 uh, situation, that of course has a, uh, had some effect on all of us, we were wondering, what are the changes that you have seen in uh, assessment and accreditation out there lately? Well, in many cases, we have not seen a lot of changes. However, because most institutions pivoted to online learning in the spring, we've seen a lot of flexibility and adjustments as to how assessment is done with the new medium. Many of these institutions, in our case over 600, have approval for two or more online programs. Therefore, those institutions are going to be very experienced in integrating assessment into what they're doing. For institutions that are not as experienced with online learning, they are making big adjustments. In most cases, we think they're doing a really good job. But let's take a look at the spring that was sudden and unexpected, somewhat of a, a, a hurricane that hit higher education, a huge disruption. It's quite likely that assessment was not done as well in the spring due to a real focus on safety and health of the students and the rather chaotic way all of us had to adjust very quickly to the situation. In those cases, it's possible that program reviews, data gathering, and other very important parts of assessment were put on hold, slowed down, or not done at all. But overall, we really feel like our institutions are staying on top of measuring teaching and learning and the outcomes. I think you bring up some really good points, and I think that it was outstanding how all of these institutions really pulled together in some cases and leaned upon each other to get the best practices on how do we move this forward. And as you mentioned, a pause is certainly defensible, particularly when assessment done well is on a continuous cycle. So one semester with a pause you know, is certainly defensible, particularly um, in the environment. And a lot of people took time to plan for how they're gonna move forward with the assessment, which is so important and maybe even now more important um, than it had been, particularly for schools that hadn't had a lot of distance learning experience in the past. Given all of this, what do you see as the future for assessment within accreditation standards moving forward in our new education environment, at least in the short term? Well, I think in the short term, we want our institutions to really measure what's going on on their campuses. And I say that in quotes, because they may not be on the campus for that to take place. It's important to know how this is working. For those faculty that were thrown into distance learning for the first time, they're going to be uncomfortable. 
And unfortunately, that's not the way to endear faculty to distance learning, to have them put in that kind of situation. It's important to have training, training for not only the faculty, but training for the students as to how to adapt well to online learning. I personally have both been over online learning programs and a continuous student in online learning. And I take my role. But when you're dealing with students who are doing this in a rapidly introduced way for the first time, we miss a huge important part of proper orientation sometimes. We believe that things will continue in a good way. We, our academies are continuing to fill up and those are dedicated to assessment. We have trained our peer reviewers extensively and will continue to do so. So when they do their virtual visits with at least one person on site, they will make sure they attend a teaching and learning assessment program review. We intend to give examples of good program reviews to help institutions over time. And we put out a lot of guidelines on during this COVID time, how do you take a look at all these very important criteria? One thing I found very interesting in the recent NILOA study on assessment during the COVID environment was a statement that said, do not be more rigorous or uh, more intense the way you do assessment for online learning. And I think that was a fantastic observation because when distance learning was introduced decades and decades ago, something came about where it was perceived you should be as good as what's offered on campus. That's not always the best benchmark. So it's important to segregate how you look at online learning assessment, how you look at on-site assessment, et cetera. But in the end, it's a time to be empathetic and caring and compassionate to both our students and the institutions. Thank you, that's very interesting. I, I certainly agree with everything you've said here today. It's, um, it's um, something that we're dealing with right now, interestingly enough. I was yet, just yesterday talking with faculty who said uh, that although we'd had both online and face-to-face -face students in the past, uh, and now that we're going to online, the faculty may be aware in some ways of how to do those online courses, but they said the word you used, I like that, was that the students need an orientation to what it means yeah. to be online. And so I think that's a real fascinating thing that, that faculty are need to consider and look at. I think a lot of them have initially assumed they can just jump in. And, and so I like the idea of it can't be more difficult. It's got to be good teaching. It's got to be good learning. And it's going to require orientation probably for some faculty and certainly for many of the students out there. But that's uh, been very useful to us today. Thank you. The Higher Learning Commission is doing a series of surveys. And the surveys are going to dig very deeply into what's going on at the institution, how they are measuring teaching and learning, how they are adapting, et cetera. We are encouraging uh, and requiring that criteria continue to be met. But the lens and the way we look at this has to be different. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see the results when you publish the study. And hopefully we'll get to talk again in the future about what's going on in in accreditation, but thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you for including us.